The Fantasy Edge with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the Fantasy Edge. I am Richard Seville, Fantasy Six Pack.net, and joining me shortly will be Jonathan Chan, also a Fantasy Six Pack Net. And hopefully later, uh, Kevin Ho uh, will uh, join us in progress as we go through the games of the week and talk a little bit about Lamar Jackson and the big win uh, against the Rams, uh, 45 to 6. Five touchdown passes by uh, Lamar Jackson in that game. If you needed Lamar Jackson to get you a bundle of points for your fantasy team, he did it for you. But he didn't quite do it for me in one league. Uh, because they took him off the field early in the fourth quarter. And all I needed was a couple more points, just just a couple more, and he would have uh, taken me over the top. I shouldn't have been that far behind anyway, but eh, it was one of those weeks. Uh, hello, Jono. How you doing? I am doing great, Richard. How are you? That's good. It's nice to have you back. Uh been a couple of weeks. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit of turkey this week because it's uh, Thanksgiving week in uh, the NFL, and we'll have some... Uh, We'll, uh, instead of our, our usual um, panic button, I guess we'll have our turkey button <laughs> instead. So we'll uh, do a little bit of that this, uh, this this week. But first I want to talk about the Rams. and the, Since you didn't see the game, I'll just uh, update the people on the, the game. Uh, Marquise Brown, two touchdowns, 40-plus uh, yards. Um, big game by Mark Ingram as well. And uh, on the Rams side, yeah. Well, I don't think you got very much uh, apart from a couple of field goals by Zerline. Uh, not much to say. Robert Woods uh, did get a little bit of garbage time. If you, uh, but if you needed anything big, uh, I'm sorry, it just wasn't there. Uh, plus, the the Ravens defense didn't do too bad. Marcus Peters got a touchdown. Uh, uh, pardon me, interception. So, uh, very good, uh, a very good day all around for uh, the uh, Baltimore Ravens. And Lamar Jackson looks like uh, he is now. <clears throat> fully and settled in as the front solid front runner of the uh of the MVP race um, unless Russell Wilson next week against uh Minnesota can top this but <laughs> that's a tall order I think uh <clears throat> I guess we should get into these games. Uh, Jono, how are you doing? But uh, before I get into that, how are you doing in your fantasy leagues? Are you doing okay? Uh, Playoff position in two of them, like third, fourth-ish. And then one of them, is it's been a write-off since week one. I think we went over this last time I was on the show. I looked through the draft log, and I had the worst pick of every round. I think if I was blind and just randomly picking players on a screen, just anywhere on my screen, it would have been better draft than I had. Like, uh-huh. actually trying. You know, that's the funny thing about drafting is that, you know, we, we get high on players. And then next year, the next year we say, I'm not going to get fooled again by this. Uh, but uh, things happen. Oh, I'm I'm never drafting Joe Mixon ever again. Like, you, you couldn't pay me to draft Joe Mixon. No. Yeah, I couldn't... Uh... Pay me to draft uh, Joe Mixon either. I, I I keep my hopes up for for uh, for a lot of players, but eh. I tend to look at teams that are contenders. I think it's I think it's a good rule of thumb. Pick players that are on contenders, and you should be all right. Now, granted, Christian McCaffrey and the uh, Panthers aren't. I think they pretty much knocked themselves out of contention, which is something that we'll dis- I want to discuss a little bit later on is about uh, teams that are out of contention. Should we worry about uh, fantasy players getting rested and uh, not getting harmed to injury and stuff? We'll uh, go with that discussion a little bit later on. But first, let's get into the games that uh, happened starting way back, it seems like, uh, so long ago that uh, there was a game on Thursday night uh, between uh, the Colts, uh, Colts 17, Houston 20. Um, not a big day uh, for uh, Jacoby Brissett, but um, Deshaun Watson did fine uh, with uh, an interception and two touchdowns, 298 yards. Uh, Will Fuller um, came back from injury and had uh, seven carries for 140 yards. Um, quite a big day for Will Fuller, and including... Uh, you actually saw DeAndre Hawkins wake up as well, you know, in your for your fantasy teams by hauling in a couple of touchdowns. So he had a he had a big game, twenty one fantasy points, hauling in two deep passes. Um, I guess the question, Jono, is um, what what is there to uh, what is it? I mean, uh, Carlos Hyde got uh, sixteen carries, sixty seven yards. He looked fairly solid. Um, but I think on the other side, the Colts, the, the big pickup this week was John Williams. 
Um, 26 carries, 104 yards, and a, and a touchdown. Um, if you picked him up on waivers this week, he 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 did it solid for you. Um, are we trusting this guy the rest of the way now? Uh, I think you have to. He's he looked you know good with 26 carries. Um, he's got fresh legs. He's wasn't on the active roster for most of the for most of the season. Came in with Jordan Wilkins hurt with Marlon Mack out with his broken hand. Again, he had the bulk of the work. He had more carries than Jacoby Brissett threw, like had passing attempts. One more, but granted, um, he got better as the game went along. He got into a rhythm and he looked good. If he continues to get uh, carries, then it should be he should be viable um, on the condition that Jordan Wilkins doesn't come back and play because that would significantly eat into his carries, I would think. Yeah, I think that'll be the big discussion is whether to uh, should should we own Jordan Wilkins, just to say. I think you have to own him because we don't know how that backfield is going to shake out. Unfortunately, some people owned and started him this week because uh, Frank Reck didn't really say anything about whether or not he was going to play or not. But um, if he's active, and you, you have to own him. Starting him is a different story until we see how it shakes out, but he has to be owned. Right. Um... Uh, I guess I guess the other the other point is uh, Will Fuller. Now I started Kenny Stills um, before the news actually fully came out, and uh, I kind of thought Stills would do a little bit better than one catch. But um, I think is he droppable now? Now that Will Fuller is back? Oh, definitely. He I I saw the entire game on Thursday. Like I was watching very very closely. I didn't even notice Kenny Stills on the field for much of the game. Completely. This was all Fuller and Hopkins in, in this one. Uh, let's get into some of the, uh, the one other. more thing about the, uh, about Houston, mm-hmm. DeAndre Hopkins. He has six touchdowns this year. If you're playing in a, uh, a 12 team league and the same owner has Hopkins had, has owned DeAndre Hopkins all year, he's scored four of those touchdowns against the same owner weeks one and week 12. So you, <laughs> so four true. of those touchdowns came against the same owner. So. <laughs> Hopefully they were able to overcome it because that's just that's unfortunate. That is that that's a good point. You know, I never thought of that. Um, next uh, next game. Uh, that's uh, that's a good good thinking there. I never thought of that one. Uh, Denver three at Buffalo twenty. Yeah. Um, uh, n- nice uh, nice game by uh, Josh Allen really for uh, rushing yardage. Uh, he got uh, total fantasy points for Josh Allen in this game was uh, and I'll get this right up here so that I'm so that I'm accurate. I don't like to go by memory. Twenty fantasy points for you. Um, the two TDs and an, and and uh, but uh, he's he doesn't get as much rushing yards of course as Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is far in the stratosphere. Um, he's among the uh, the trailing group uh, near the top. Uh, 56 uh, rushing yards for Josh Allen. Um, <clears throat> not much from uh, Devin Singletary this week. It was all Frank Gore breaking the record for, uh, uh, he, well, actually not breaking a record, but passing Barry Sanders on the all-time uh, uh, rushing list. Of course, he, um, Gore has taken a lot longer than uh, uh, Barry Sanders. I guess this is a non-football question. Uh, where do we rank Gore in, cause, uh, uh, in the all-time greats? Because, you know, they've been doing the thing on, on the uh, NFL 100 on NFL Network, and they did all the running backs, and Barry Sanders was uh, was among no, that, that group. That list is a joke. That list is a joke. <laughs> you, you can't have a top was it they ranked the 12 top running backs yeah and not include adrian peterson ladanian tomlinson or marshall falk it's it's a joke yeah i i kind of tend to think so too the thing is that they they put in players that are outside of living memory in the television age and those players now granted they were great in their time and they deserve preservation of memory in in the memory but they're outside of living memory. I think there needs to be a separation between the Super Bowl era and yeah. the uh, and the pre, you know, the AFL NFL uh, era. Because AFL didn't even start until the until the early '60s. So, I, you know, there's a it's a it's a totally different game and uh, different style of play. And so, I mean, the game. I think you kind of have to separate it into into two halves: the first half and the second half, really. Mm-hmm. Because actually, when you look at it, the the Super Bowl actually kind of is the Super Bowl year is almost split. I mean, we just had the fiftieth uh, Super Bowl, so it's almost a fifty fifty split between the two eras. And, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I I don't think too much of that. But but back to my question about Gore. Uh, what do you think of Frank Gore? Is he? Uh, I mean, past Barry Sanders, it took a lot longer for him to do it, but he's done it. Do we? Uh, how do we rank him? Uh, I mean, I I love Frank Gore. Um, he's based on his place on the list. He's got to be up there. I don't think as a talent, I don't think you can rank him among 
the people that he's with, but just based on his longevity and the fact that he's been able to stick around so long and be effective, uh, even through, you know, his um, age related declines, all that kind of stuff, he's found a way to still be effective in today's NFL. And you have to give him a ton of credit for that. Yeah. Uh, but his compadre, Devin Singletary, still got 21 carries, 106 yards. It looks like he's back on the radar again. He, he dropped off there for a bit because Gore, obviously, Gore being Gore's presence. Uh, it doesn't help any running back that I, I've, I've noticed that about Gore. Any team that he goes to, you kind of have to go, mm, because you know he's going to take carries away. Yep. And, uh, until the day he retires. Until the day he retires. That's right. Um, not much really much to say in scoring this game. Cole Beasley, if you started him, you got a touchdown on 76 yards from Cole Beasley. Cole, Cole Beasley's been a pretty solid fella. Yes. This, uh, this year, very good, uh, you know, inside, uh, inside receiver, um, plays much, much the same sort of role that, uh, Julian Edelman plays on the Patriots. <coughs> uh, moving right along, Pittsburgh 16 at Cincinnati 10. Um, Duck Hodges had to take over from Mason Rudolph because Mason Rudolph is just awful. Yep. Pure and simple. <laughs> he was, uh, he's actually quite terrible. Um, maybe they just pre benched him so he wouldn't get killed on the field, uh, this coming week. That might be a good idea. I think it might be a good idea that uh, I mean, he's he's definitely not playing this week against the Browns, but I think maybe they pre benched him just to say, you know, they didn't bench him just for that game. Uh, I can't help. I got to. I, I cannot help but have a, a sneaky desire that, that I actually, as, as much as it's kind of a a, a non important, no playoff implications, real a very very minor playoff implications. Uh, the Browns in Pittsburgh is, uh, I think, a game everybody wants to see in Pittsburgh this time. We're going to have, I mean, uh, I think you got to put the chin straps on a little bit tighter than usual for this game uh, next week. But oh, let's... yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Benny Snell, 21 carries, 98 yards. Um, uh, Jalen Samuels, a lot of people started him instead and were very disappointed. Uh Jalen Samuels, uh, in in place of uh, I'll get I'll get his stats up for this game because it's not quite ready here. He had two carries for six yards and three catches for twenty six yards. Yeah, a total of uh, uh, that that equates to five. 30, yeah, five it, it wasn't a great fantasy game. points in half PPR. Not very good. No. But Benny Snell is he the guy to own now? Oh, definitely. He out touched Samuel twenty two to twenty two to nine or yeah. out targeted i guess it would, would be but out touch 22 to 5 so just br- br- like samuels he's supposed to be the pass catcher um outside of his the uh week 11 game where he caught where he caught a touchdown a short yards touchdown he's not been good um we heard all year that samuels was you know one of the best handcuffs behind james connor he's really done nothing since connor went down and no uh no and Snell is the guy. They gave him 21 carries in his first game back from injury. Snell is the guy. He needs to be owned. All right. And uh, <clears throat> uh, Joe Mixon, one of your favorites. Uh, 16 yeah. fantasy points, 16 fantasy PC points, 17 fantasy points. He only got eight, but he still rushed for 79 yards. Uh, but you don't want him ever again. No. I No. Just the Bengals don't really know how to use him. Mixon's a great pass catcher, and he had no targets um, in a game that they were trailing. It's. I don't think he's a terrible running back. It's just the Bengals have no idea how to do anything. So. Well, it's like I say, you know, bad offenses. You don't really want uh, want players on it. Um, uh, Deontay Johnson didn't do much. Uh, three catch of twenty nine yards. Um, he still got. James it. Washington I, had a game though. James Washington had the game. Uh, you're right, and uh, he scored a touchdown from uh, Doug Hodges. Uh, yes. But again, looking forward to Browns and uh, see you in Pittsburgh as. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> the famous line goes. Um, Carolina thirty-one at New Orleans thirty-four. Um, this was a big. This was quite a big game, and this this kind of brings up my point. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, uh, of course, um, the stats don't don't tell the whole story, but I mean, he's still uh, on pace for the record for uh, most uh, yards from scrimmage. I mean, twenty-two carries, sixty-four yards, one touchdown, and uh, nine receptions. Caught all nine of them too for sixty-nine yards and a touchdown. Uh, great day for McCaffrey, but Carolina, uh, they had their chance at the end of the game, but they couldn't punch it in for a score. They couldn't even kick the field goal for a score. And the Saints went down and, uh, easily Will Lutz got the, uh, field goal and they won the game. So, uh, Breeze, 300 yards, three touchdowns, uh, did all right for you. Uh, Michael Thomas being the number one as he always is. Um, question here is, for fantasy is Latavius Murray and Mark 
uh, pardon me, and Alvin Kamara. What is going on, Jono? Uh, this is, well, it's going back to the same split that Kamara had with Ingram uh, for the past few years, but this time Kamara's not really scoring any touchdowns. He hasn't had a rushing touchdown since week three, um, hasn't had a passing touchdown all year, I don't think. Um, no, maybe week one. But yeah, Kamara's just not finding the end zone. And Murray is. Yeah, <laughs> that's really the difference here. Kamara's still getting targets. He's still, you know, seeing yeah. chances. Just he's not finding the end zone. And Murray just happens to be on the field when they get into the end zone. So uh not much you can do in that kind of situation. And Kamara's one of the bigger busts of the draft, actually, but well, in the first round, considering he was going top three, but um, but you look at his really not, uh, you look at his fantasy numbers. They're not too bad. I mean, he's last, since the bye week 11, 17, and fifteen. But again, no touchdowns since week three, where yep. he had two. Yep. And uh, I guess that is a concern. And whereas when we look at uh, the uh, touchdown total for uh, Latavius Murray here, he has uh, when uh, counting them up here six touchdowns, yep. including one in the last game against Carolina. So uh, yeah, I mean that week three game is the only game that Kamara actually had touchdowns. So I think. A little bit of bad luck, I would say. He was he had the hamstring injury, so a little bit of injury stuff, a little bit of bad luck on the touchdown side, but not much you can say. This is, you know, it's still Camaro's backfield, but Murray's siphoning off enough touches now that you have to be concerned. I guess my question to you is is this, is that now that Carolina has dropped to five and six, is there a kind of a concern for fantasy owners that uh, Riverboat Ron might, if they lose another game, they might uh, uh, sort of start shutting down Christian McCaffrey, preserve him for next year and not risk any kind of injury or something like that is there is there, is there that concern or since he's on 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 target for a record do you keep him do they, do they keep him going yeah i think if he's still on pace for the for the yardage record then he'll he'll play um even if he's not i think they'll let him play i don't think that McCaffrey's like obviously he's a superstar um but i don't think he he's the kind of player that's going to you know take a sitting out too lightly i think they're going to play it out i think they'll want to see what they have in Kyle Allen uh, for next season, mm-hmm. and I think he's gonna need his running back to test that for like. So I think he'll he'll keep playing. I'm not too too concerned about that. Okay, uh, moving right along. Uh, Tampa Bay, uh, 35 at Atlanta. Uh, James Winston, big day. Uh, 313 yards, two interceptions, three touchdowns. He actually did a little bit of rushing too. Uh, something you don't see from uh, from <clears throat> James Winston too often. He actually rushed for uh, 38 yards. He's been doing a lot of rushing in these last few weeks. He's he's had he has had rush, rushing yards of 53 in week eight, 40 in. In, uh, week 10 and 23 and week 11, 38 no. just in this last game. So he's, he's, he's sort of putting the wheels on a little bit more. 26 fantasy points. One of the uh, one of the top uh, fantasy guys this week. In fact, uh, he was um, he's number probably four QB quarter. two or three. He was QB four this week. Four. Mm. Yeah. Uh, oh, obviously he's not two. I forgot about Lamar today. So obviously he's not two. He was, he yeah. was three. Three uh, is uh, Lamar Jackson, Ryan Tannehill, Sam Darnold. Oh, Darnold. Darnold, yeah. Yeah, I knew, I knew Lamar was one. I knew Tannehill was two. I just didn't know Darnold was three. Mm. Okay. Uh, back to the this, game. This, this was my favorite game of the week. Why? Um, this was just peak Jameis Winston. Uh, starts off the game. His first pass attempt was a brutal interception. Comes back on the next drive and leads a 98-yard touchdown drive where he runs for a crew, uh, a key, for, uh, key first down on third. And then throws a beautiful pass into triple coverage where Chris Godwin runs it, runs it for 71 yards. Yeah. Comes back on the next drive and tries to Patrick Mahomes jump pass, throws a behind receiver for another pick, and then proceeds to throw for another 300 yards and win the game. Just peak Jameis Winston. And he's just one of the most fun players to watch because you never know what you're going to get. Yeah, but um, the, the question here, too, I also have to bring in is is also Mike Evans kind of left in the cold. Uh Nine fantasy points and just seven fantasy points. Fifty yard, fifty yards receiving. Is Godwin the guy now? <laughs> um, they 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 switch based on the matchup. I mean, certain teams will focus all their attention on Evans. I think that's what Atlanta was doing, and Godwin got open for a lot of after catch runs. So I think that that really helped him, especially with his seventy one yarder. But obviously, Evans has the talent to break out at any point. But he, a lot of his value is coming from 
massive games that he'll have once every few weeks. It's difficult to predict those, but Evans has the higher, I guess, I wouldn't say higher ceiling because obviously Godwin went off for 184 yards and two touchdowns this week. But I think Evans is your boom, your ceiling guy, and Godwin's the more consistent guy. And uh, one one footnote here too, uh, O.J. Howard, uh, one fantasy point. He got uh, one reception for 10 yards. It was a pretty key reception. He got them to the goal line. And then Ronald Jones punched it in. Yeah, uh, um, key reception, but fantasy wise, um, I th- drop. Yeah, drop. Uh, do you, uh, do we? Uh, do, do you think you he, he'll remain with the with the Buccaneers next year? Um, I don't think they'll cut him, but uh, I I don't know. I don't I don't know what Arians is gonna do. I don't think they'll cut him, but uh, or do you think though th- that's when the offer will come? In? Yep, to the Patriots. All right. Uh, there was a bad. There's one thing too. Brian Hill. Of the, well, this is just the the last note on this particular particular issue is that Brian Hill um, basically snubbed fantasy owners last. Week. Did you hear about that? Uh, because he everybody added him and he was terrible. Yeah, and then he said uh-huh. uh, uh, he kind of laughingly put the you know the laughingly emoji on there. I don't care yeah. about you fantasy people. Kind of like uh, made a bit of a snub to 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 fantasy people. I mean, I didn't hear about that, but. I mean, maybe he should care more about not being a bad running back. Um, he looked bad, and he's about to lose his job to what? Allison, Kerry K- Allison, Kadri like, Allison. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, come on, man. Don't don't listen. Don't you know? Try not to fight back on Twitter and get better, so you don't lose your job to a rookie. Yeah, I didn't. I I didn't really take kindly to that uh, that tweet, but uh, he was quiet again. Um, is do we own Kadri Allison? Do we jump? Is he a waiver wire in your waiver wire picks this week? He is actually. Um, he's the red zone guy. Hill has not looked good. He uh, all I think Hill had nine carries for fourteen yards. Allison had eight for twenty. So neither of them are super efficient. But Allison is the red zone guy. He's six one two thirty five. He's a big dude. He's gonna get. All the goal line carries he can handle. And if the Atlanta offense can move the ball, then he's going to have his chances. Yeah, I like him. I, I watched him. I thought, this guy's got uh, this guy's got play. This guy can ball. Although, granted, Atlanta does have New Orleans next week. And mm-hmm. they have the fourth-ranked the fourth ranked, uh, rush defense by Pro, Fo- Pro Football Focus. Yes. So, tough matchups. You're going to need a goal line carry in that one for Allison. Mm-hmm. Moving right along. Uh, Giants 14 at Bears uh, 19. Um, half decent game by Trubisky for once. Uh, at least he's not harming your uh, fantasy players too much. Uh, do believe that uh, the one touchdown catch uh, went to ooh, uh, that was Robinson. Yeah, Allen Robinson. Allen, Allen Robinson had a fairly decent outing. Where did he, uh, fairly decent, Richard. It was the 131 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, I mean, that <laughs> compared with everything. <laughs> yeah, 20, uh, 22 fantasy points. Yeah. Got them mixed up with some other guys, probably probably with the Giants. Uh, you know what? Uh, Daniel Jones needs some work. Uh, really, every week he keeps losing the football. What is it about Daniel Jones? Cannot get. Weak. He wasn't ready. He he wasn't. We talked about it when he when uh, Shermer first put him in. He wasn't ready. Uh, the plan was for him to sit all year behind Eli. He came in after what three games because the Giants were gonna complete compete for a playoff spot. Like, come on. He was a project when he was drafted. He's still a project. And they can't really bring Eli back in now or else they look like the Bengals. So yeah, That's right. Yeah. That's true. Uh, bad outing for Sterling Shepard. Uh, people like, oh, great, he's going to be back. So, uh, really a whole lot of nothing going on for the for the Giants offense. I uh, will say, though, um, because Golden Tate got concussed catching a touchdown, uh, Darius Slayton against the Bear, the good Bears defense. He still had uh four catches for sixty seven yards. And if Tate is out next week, I think Slayton is a very very good play. Yeah, he's huge. He's he's a really good player. Um, uh, and um, Jones likes him. So uh, so uh, I don't know. A star in the future and definitely uh, somebody uh, who will be mm, a topic of the of of the draft board and ADPs next year. Um, not much happening on the ground for the Bears. Unfortunately, we uh, always hope for David Montgomery, but David Montgomery, um, three fantasy points again. Uh, this was a guy that I kind of hope, uh, pardon me, four fantasy points in uh, in half PPR, but uh, I don't know. It's just not working out. I kind of picked uh, David Montgomery to be kind of like that sneaky guy that was going to win you a league at some point. It doesn't look like, looks like he's losing you a league right now, but no, the Bears offense all, all told is just, just not very good. I mean, apart from uh, you know uh, a big a big game from uh, Allen Robinson now and again, and Taylor Gabriel, uh, he's okay. 
but uh, second fiddle, and he's kind of boom and bust himself. Moving right along, Miami and Cleveland, Miami 24 at Cleveland 41. Uh, a bit of a breakout for Ma- Baker Mayfield, but who can, how can you not break out against Miami? You know, um, in fact, they were saying on Twitter that uh, <coughs> um, this was the fans, fans were criticizing. How do you criticize a team that has a blowout? <laughs> but uh, that's what fans were doing. Like, br- I don't know, but the Browns are never happy. Uh, they- I mean, you got when you're that you know unhappy with your team for that long. I feel like praising them is difficult, especially after the start to the year that they had. But you know, three wins in a row. Baker's looked much better, much more careful with the ball. He's not throwing you know three interceptions a game anymore. So he's he's looking better. And now he gets Pittsburgh in a rematch where he had two touchdowns last time. So Big it'll game. be on the road. Grant, granted, it's on the road this time. So I don't know if I would start Baker, but there are good signs. And yeah. Njoku could be back. And a big day, too, because he was uh, um, like he was, uh, uh, fifth uh, quarterback this week. Honestly, I think Kareem Hunt is making a huge difference for, for this offense. I didn't think the difference would be this big, but having Kareem Hunt there as a as a receiving option, even though Nick Chubb is a good receiver, but having Kareem Hunt there just adds that extra dimension, and the offense looks completely different with him in there. Yeah, and uh, is he a guy you can flex every week too? Because he got 12 fantasy points. He's had 11, 9, and 12. Can we flex him every week? I did. He was my RB2 this week. Oh, well, there you go. Oh, even as far as that, huh? That's he was good. my RB2. I had no choice. Well, that's, well yeah, but there's been a lot of buys in there. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, heavy buys of... Uh, of main fantasy players out. I should have. I should. I should have started Latavius Murray, but the point difference was one. It was like one point, so yeah. it's okay. But Jarvis Landry has been good uh, for three games running. Really strong. Yes. Better than better than OBJ, really. Yeah, I think the the one broken play where OBJ and uh, Landry were just wide open and Baker had his pick. He 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 chose to throw it to OBJ. Landry could have had three touchdowns with an extra <laughs> fifty or so yards. Mm. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> Are you starting Baker next week against the Steelers? <laughs> um, it's I don't know that that game could be a complete bloodbath. I don't know how that's going to go. Pittsburgh's defense has been pretty good. Um, he did Baker did play well last time. Like I said, uh, no picks, two touchdowns. Uh, he had twenty twenty one fantasy points. But man, <laughs> Pittsburgh on the road, divisional games. If you need a QB, because all the buys are over. So I think if you need a QB, then Baker's not the worst option. He's probably going to be in like the QB1 conversation, probably on the lower end. But I think he's gained enough over the last three weeks that I'd be willing to start him. Yeah, this is one of those fantasy games where you it's because there's so much revenge and there's an atmosphere to it now because of all the stuff that went on with Miles Garrett and that. It's it's kind of like made a really big. It's it's kind of put. Uh, you kind of have to put fantasy aside a little bit and kind of add some sort of intangibles into your reckoning for it because of this. It's not it's not straightforward fantasy wise, is it? Nah, it's just because you don't know what can happen. Like in a game, emotions are going to be running very very high, and anything can happen. Somebody can get ejected, and then all of a sudden your fantasy day is ruined. Yeah. Right. So obviously you're betting on somebody getting ejected in that case but (laughs) it's not a smart bet but who knows anything can happen i wonder who's going to be the i wonder uh which uh i don't want to be a ref for that game might not be uh i I don't know they they you know it might be they might been told like uh, we've got to keep this cool guys for the league's sake and all this sort of thing you know because of of today in today's optics stuff like this doesn't doesn't go down well like it used to in the old days so I, I don't know if I, I I'm not sure if we'll see anything spectacular. I mean, it's still worth watching, but uh, anyways, it's so easy to get sidetracked when we start talking about Cleveland and Pittsburgh. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm moving right along. <laughs> Oakland three at Jets thirty four. What a blowout! Uh, Derek Carr got pulled from the yep. game, benched. Not not much to go on in this game. The Jets dominated. The end. <laughs> yeah, Oakland. A sh- brutal loss for Oakland. Yeah, brutal loss for Oakland. Uh, uh, if you if you had the courage to start Robbie Anderson, I think you're okay. Uh, he scored you a touchdown, but uh, but Sam Darnold, number three, as we mentioned, he was the number three uh, fantasy quarterback. Uh, so a big day for him. 315 yards, two touchdowns, so, and didn't get a pick. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, no, he's been trending up with the Jets' super super easy schedule. Um, yeah, just I mean, over the last four weeks, it's Miami. The Giants, the Redskins, Oakland, and then next week he's got Cincinnati, and then Miami again. So if you need a QB, Darnold's got Darnold's the uh, the obvious streamer. Yeah, he's a good streamer right now. Uh, he's holding pretty good. Uh, Detroit uh, 
16 at Washington, 19. Um, Dwayne Haskins drove down at the end of the game for a uh, game-winning field goal. Um, story of this game, I guess, I guess we could say it's Bo Scarborough. A lot of people, he was he was the other waiver grab, and now people haven't been wanting to trust. Um, but he's all ground. Um, I think Bo Scarborough in, in, in standard leagues, if people are still playing standard, he does a lot better. He's, he's kind of the guy you want. 18 carries, 98 yards. That, that's a very good, uh, uh, yards per carry average. I'm not sure how that works out, too, but uh, just doing the math, that's nearly five uh, yards a carry. So, um, uh, can we can we flex Bo Scarborough going forward, or or are we still cautious about this backfield? No, uh, I mean, I think at this point, if you rostering Bo Scarborough, then you probably have a reason to start him. Two weeks in a row now, he's done well. He had 14 carries last week, now 55 yards and a touchdown. This year, it was 18 for 98. He he did fumble, so it wasn't all good. But um, obviously, he's the lead back uh, for the Lions now. I don't think uh, Ty Johnson's going to come f- come back from the dead anytime soon and <laughs> take relevancy. Um, if you start him next week, just it is the Bears on a short week. So he might not have a great time. But just because both offenses are struggling, this could be a low-scoring game e- either way. So he'll, he'll probably get a bunch of carries at low efficiency. Yeah, that's our... Uh... That's our opening game on uh, Thanksgiving. So uh, the opening game uh, bears and bears at Detroit. So there'll, there'll be lots of uh, turkey. Lots of turkey. Lots of uh, turkey. One thing I did notice from this game is that Terry McLaurin could have had two touchdowns if Haskins was a sl- a little bit more accurate. He like with with Keenum in there, he probably catches two touchdowns. Mm. So unfortunately, but yeah, yeah I, he's dragging McLaurin down. There's no question about it. Um, McLaurin's become a risky start now. Very risky. Uh, Jaguars at Titans, twenty to forty-two. Um, uh, the uh, Titans. I think Tannehill, uh, quite a good day. Uh, Nick Foles, no touchdown passes, but finally, finally, Leonard Fournette finds the end zone. Hooray! Yeah, yeah, that was that was nice to see, considering he touched the ball like thirty-three times or something insane like that. Like I, I understand that he is your offense, but you're giving the man. 33 touches in a game that you're getting blown out by like 30 come on man he you know he's already injury prone do we really need that kind of wear on him exactly uh he's always he's always a concern for for worry i always uh i always feel like uh you know well these days you don't know guys can be out for a concussion or a hamstring for a game or two you know so it's, i think it's i think it's always handy to you know keep somebody because Reichel armstead's quite a good uh running back you know his backup is uh, if you own Leonard Fournette, you should own. Uh, if you're in the playoffs, you should own uh, Reichel Armstead because he's quite a good uh, handcuff for Leonard Fournette. Reed. And uh, Derrick Henry uh, did well himself on the other side of the ball. Of course, 159 yards, two touchdowns himself. Yeah, decent day. Two touchdowns in 10 seconds. Yeah, <laughs> great guy. Um, I just still don't understand that ponytail. <laughs> anyway, I mean the the first touchdown, the long run. That just it seemed like an unnecessary stiff arm. It seemed like he he purposely slowed down just to turn around and stiff arm the guy it, it seemed like a very unnecessary uh just shot to take the guy out he could have just accelerated and got away with it but it's okay it was a better highlight and uh boom bust uh, aj brown if you started aj brown because of the because of the bye weeks he did quite well uh obviously yeah, I... Cor- Corey davis is nowhere anymore nope Absolutely not. Corey Davis is fantasy irrelevant. He's quickly becoming NFL irrelevant too. Yeah, I would say so too because I saw some of the the he was getting quality uh, targets from Tannehill, but he wasn't hauling them in. I saw him. I, I was watching some of his pass, uh, some of the passes going to. Gee, that's a quality pass. Oh, dropped it. Then there was another one. Dropped it. He's had some. He's had some bad targets dropped. Whereas. Uh, Brown is the the number one target in this in this offense now. Well, obviously outside Derrick Henry, but the number one receiver in this offense, AJ Brown. He's led the team in in targets three out of the last five weeks. The other two weeks were Jonu Smith, who had zero targets this week. So I think Brown is uh well on his way to having a good fantasy playoffs. On to the late games, uh, Seahawks seventeen at Philadelphia nine, and uh, this game. <clears throat> Was kind of an important fantasy, or, well, uh, real football game because the uh, Seahawks are trying to uh, keep pace with the uh, San Francisco 49ers, and of course Philadelphia is still in the hunt for well, <laughs> trying to win the uh, NFC East, the Sweat Hog Division. And uh, but uh, Carson Wentz, Jono, I really 
don't know if he's okay a lot of people make excuses for him that okay he's had jordan matthews to throw who got cut by the way this week um he hasn't had his uh normal i mean Aguilar was out uh Alshon jeffrey was out but that sh- still shouldn't matter we see quarterbacks with lesser lights and they still manage to do something and he got 256 yards two interception and a touchdown so nonetheless uh, but it just hasn't looked that good to me. Uh, to be fair to Wentz, there's only so many times he can throw to Zach Ertz. Um, I think he had like 14 targets or something crazy this week. There's only so many times he can throw to Ertz. Um, Goddard looks good as a target, but he fumbled, so it didn't really help his standing. Uh, there was a really interesting video from Dan Orlovsky on Twitter where he broke down what the receivers were doing on the pass plays for the for the Eagles. Yeah. And uh, Artega Whiteside specifically would, you know, run out of his route or drift away from where the ball was supposed to be. And on crucial, you know, third and fourth down plays, he's just running either the wrong route or not running it crisply enough where Wentz places the ball perfectly where he should be. He's not there and it's costing it's costing the Eagles offense. So I think if Wentz gets like a more experienced receiver back or, you know, Alshon Jeffrey decides to start playing well again then uh i think wentz has more than he's showing now but i think his his weapons and whatever's going on with the whole philadelphia offense isn't isn't helping but i think wentz is a little better than than this season uh are we running out to pick up uh rashad penny who had a big day <laughs> rashad uh, penny mean, of all people had a big day in fact he was uh, uh rashad penny was one two three four is number seven rb this week <laughs> In half PPR. I, I wouldn't run for Rashad Penny. Um, people will because he's on a popular team and he had 129 yards at touchdown. He's gonna he's gonna be the big the big running back ad on waivers this week. Um, I, you know, I don't I don't see it. You know, he he doesn't look he doesn't look very good. Even though he had that big day, I don't think he's that great. He's he's an average running back. I think with he the is. volume he theoretically could get in Seattle, but um. It's tough to say how that how the timeshare is going to break out. Obviously, they're very committed to Carson, but he Penny's going to be the pickup. He's like I said before, he's going to be the number one waiver running back. And if you want him, you're going to have to pay for him. That's and I don't know if I'm willing to do that. That that was kind of my my concern with the, with the, with the performance like this. No, I'm not really uh, not really interested in him either. But uh, not much from uh, as for uh, the Seattle receivers. Like Seattle won, um, but uh, it was actually an off day for. Uh, well, I can't say it was completely off day for for uh, Russell Wilson um, because he had some guys drop passes like DK Metcalf dropped a sure touchdown and he had Jacob Hollister all clear for another touchdown so yeah, it was just I think it was one of those days at the office for uh Russell Wilson but I will say this it definitely because he did he did so poorly I mean overall that I think it really uh hurts his MVP chance especially after seeing what Lamar um Jackson has been doing lately yeah I think I think unless Lamar like significantly slows down over the next four weeks I think I think he's gonna win it just the buzz around him right now is insane He's doing such good things for the league. He's drawing so many eyes just because of how electric he is. I think I think he's going to win it. Same way Mahomes did last year. In the rain and sleet we go. Dallas this was brutal nine. to watch. This whole game was brutal. <laughs> At New England 13. Um come controversial tripping calls and uh controversial field goal. Um Jerry Jones not happy. Um sounds like uh Jason Garrett's on the hot seat. Um, talk about him. Uh, like I don't know why. I can't see why the Giants would want to get him on the team for Shermer. But um, I know Shermer's not that great of a coach. But would you really want Jason Garrett on there? Uh, I, I wouldn't want Jason Garrett near any of my teams. That field goal was one of the most cowardly plays, uh, play calls I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Like, just why? Like, it doesn't. I wouldn't be surprised if the win probability for Dallas went down after they successfully kicked that field goal. It just a cowardly call. You're playing to they, he was playing to not lose as opposed to playing to win. Terrible call. Bad coach. Yeah, it was a bad coach, but they did have some bad calls in it. And uh, I will. I think everybody knows that uh, that Amari Cooper had pulled a Cooper Cup this week. He was the Amari Cooper Cup. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he had he got the goose egg of the week and uh, absolutely horrible not catch. And, and in fact, one of the catches, an important clutch catch he had to make, um, fell fell to the ground on replay. And 
Dallas lost. This was in their last drive, and it could he actually that catch could have saved um, Jason Garrett's decision to go for that field goal had he made the catch. It could have, but I mean, there's still no excuse. You kick the field goal, you're still down by by a touchdown, or you still you need you still need to score a touchdown to win, and you have to stop New England either way. No, so I, why? Uh, you called it right. I mean, you're you're calling it right there. I mean, the the thing is, is in a game like that, you have to. Uh, I mean, because uh, New England, they they weren't able to uh, score a field goal on you, so you're still in the game. I mean, okay, granted, if if uh, New England did score a field goal, then you'd need two scores to win. If you didn't get the touchdown, but I think, it's, but I think you're right. Yeah, you still go. Um, the famous line though from uh, Jerry Jones was, uh, if I can put it exactly, I've got it on my my Twitter feed, and I think a lot of people feel this feel like this about their fantasy teams too. And uh, Jerry the Jerry Jones had the quote of the week, and uh, as soon as I get it up here, I'll I'll put it up. But we can, if you want to, uh, anything else to add to this game uh, apart from um, the pair of rookies for New England looked pretty good. Uh, in Keel Harry and Jacoby Myers with Dorsett and Sanu out, they had to step up, and they did. Harry caught uh, one of four targets for a touchdown, a uh, very slick touchdown. Um, he showed good ball skills on that. Uh, Myers had nine nine targets and caught 70 74 yards 76 yards for them so if um if Dorsett with his concussion is out again next week and Sanu with his ankle injury is out again next week uh look for the rookies to step up again uh this time in a dome in the safety of a dome so you don't have to worry about the weather uh Brady will have a much easier time finding his targets and think if you need a a sneaky flex, I think Harry and uh, and Jacoby Myers are going to be uh, decent options. Yeah, w- worth uh, worth picking up, especially uh, considering considering those. Yeah. Uh, the the quote I was looking for is with the makeup of this team, I shouldn't be this frustrated. He he's right. <laughs> he's uh, he's definitely right. Um, but I I extended that further in a tweet uh, today, and I said, with the makeup of this fantasy team, have you ever thought this? With the makeup of this fantasy team, I shouldn't be this frustrated. I thought that through the first five or six weeks, and then uh, I figured, you know what? If there's if they're this consistently disappointing, then they're bad. <laughs> I've thought that a lot. Um, with it, so I've I've had good teams go go down. It's, it's it really sucks, especially in in uh, fantasy finals and things. You know, just the other guy beats you down. It's like there's nothing worse than a I I you know I don't know about you, but I go into every fantasy week uh, with with white dawn. I always think that uh, I'm going through this again. Like it's it's uh, you uh, you you think you've got a good team, and then you one of your guys just you know just doesn't doesn't get any targets or gets gets minimal targets. He gets you know. Everybody's getting their floor and not their ceiling or anywhere near their ceiling. It just doesn't, uh, or, no, you would just like, can't everything be like in a happy, happy medium all the time, but it never is. The guys are constantly getting the floor. They're not getting any, you know, ugh. I don't know. I can happen again for Cooper Cup this, uh, on this game. So, uh, just, just here on Monday nights. Uh, yeah, but, um, yeah, Tom Brady, uh, 190 yards, one touchdown. Eh? Mm. Yeah, uh, the Pats' offense is um, s- sputtering. I guess I'm, I'm going to use the nice word here: sputtering. They are the worst-looking 10 and one offense ever. I think. Yeah, and uh, well, I guess it's when I don't. I don't want to say system quarterback, but uh, let's not get this started again. <laughs> system quarterback. All right. Y- you know what? I think Mahomes is the system quarterback here. All right. <laughs> all right. 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 Okay, I'll give myself a. a... <laughs> I'll give myself a turkey for that one. Uh, the late game. This was supposed to be a little closer than this, but uh, here we had another blowout. Uh, Green Bay 8, <laughs> San Francisco 37. Uh, this didn't quite work out for Aaron Rodgers. That- beat down. Hmm? Oh, my goodness. The San Francisco defense is something else. They're, it's, they're a great defense, but they do it in a different way than New England does. Like, watching two like amazing defenses and San Francisco just hits you. They're nonstop at the QB with with Nick Bosa and uh man, you got to be careful if you if you're playing QB against San Francisco, you got to be careful. You do. And and they're, they 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 rush so well. They 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 get into the backfield. They like Rodgers Rodgers doesn't have ways to move around and I mean, I consider 
you know, you need running backs that can block it, but even the running backs can't get in there and block. I don't know what it, I don't know what it is going to take to stop them. I don't know. Somehow the Seahawks did it, but again, the Seahawks did it. They got back in the game. The, the, the San Francisco 49ers, it can be rattled. And I noticed that in the uh, the Seahawks game, the one that they lost. And that was a key game because the Seahawks defense were able to rattle um, Jimmy Grapple. Granted, now Kittle wasn't in that game. And they lost uh, Emmanuel Sanders in that game as well. But Emmanuel Sanders was back for this one and he didn't do much. And Debo Samuel, uh, of course, is the uh, the number one guy. I guess he's the, the guy to own. Finally, we have some guy emerge, and I guess it's Debo Samuel, is it? Uh, I don't know. With It's a tough offense because it's obviously a run-first offense um, uh, with all, you know, Coleman 1A and then either Mostert or Brito or whichever one is healthy at the time is the 1B. Um, between Samuel and Sanders, I think if Sanders is fully healthy, I think he's probably the guy. I know Debo's come on strong the last couple of weeks, but I think if Sanders is healthy, he's he he should still be the guy. I I would think. Ah, hmm. uh, but speaking of San Francisco, San Francisco and the Ravens next week, uh, game of the week. Uh, not really Pittsburgh, <laughs> Cleveland. It's actually San Francisco and the Ravens next week's the big game. Who do you like? Uh, I don't. I think. I feel like I like the Ravens in that one. San Francisco's defense, if they have a weakness, it's running QBs. And mm. uh, yeah, I think the Ravens have a guy that can do that. So I think it's going to be a close one. It's going to be a great game. But I think I think the Ravens have that one. Mm. Okay, I guess it's time to uh, our turkey button. Turkey button of the week. I haven't got anything. Uh, I haven't got anything ready. So if you want to go ahead and uh, do yours first, do your turkeys. Turkeys of the week for Thanksgiving. It's uh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go Chris Carson. Talked about him a little bit earlier with the Rashad Penny stuff earlier, but, um, another lost fumble for Carson. That's his fourth of the year. I think he's fumbled. Uh, I can double check the numbers, but he's fumbled a ton this year. And I think this is the first time all year that Pete Carroll has actually said that instead of throwing his full support behind Carson, this is the first time all year he's actually said, Hey, let's, you know, let's get Rashad Penny involved. Let's make this a committee. And uh, that's not what you want if you're a Chris Carson owner, because what he banks on is volume. Um, Chris Carson, he's a good runner, but he needs, you know, 20 carries because he doesn't do much through the air. So if he's not getting volume, if he's in a committee with Rashad Penny, then he's going to take a huge hit um, in terms of his production. And it's not it's not good. So you have to get to see what happens next week. And hopefully for Carson owners, it doesn't turn into a full blown committee because his value is going to tank if it does. Six fumbles this year, three lost. Excuse that's, me. That's 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 that is bad. So uh, I guess that's why I guess yeah, it makes sense. The uh, the penny pickup. Uh, I guess it's a little bit more than just uh, recency bias, isn't it? Uh, because mm-hmm. we do know about that Carson problem. Okay, my turkey <laughs> is going to be uh, yeah, um, it's got to be Cooper Cup. Um, it's just not happening with, uh, with him anymore. Um, of course, he had that goose egg in, in week 10 against Pittsburgh, uh, seven fantasy points against, uh, the Bears and, uh, another seven fantasy points against the Ravens tonight. Uh, it's really, uh, if you're going into your fantasy playoffs with Cooper Cup and hoping that he's your WR1, I mean, you didn't draft him as a WR1, you did, he's, really kind of regressed into uh normalcy and i don't think that's his fault i think a lot of it has to do with as we said uh golf but uh if you have cooper cup you don't drop him but boy you're gonna have some hard starts uh his his uh <clears throat> if i might mention his uh upcoming games which is what, what i didn't do i'll just go back to him for uh cooper cup where are you here I lost them. Uh, lost them. Their upcoming schedule is Cardinals, Seahawks, Cowboys, Niners, and Cardinals again. So not terrible for all all, all things considered. Um, Arizona and Dallas are some nice matchups. Seattle's yeah. middling, I think. Yeah, so it might help him there, but he's still um, he's still a nervous start now. Yes, extremely. Over the first uh, first five games, he averaged nineteen uh, nineteen points in point in half PPR. Over the last five games, he's averaged ten. Um, and that includes the, uh, that includes a 220 yard one touchdown game against the Bengals. He's still only averaging 10 points a game over the last five. Um, I don't watch enough Rams to know what's going on or why Goff suddenly decided to get this much worse and not target Cooper Cup. But yeah, it's, uh, it's not been good outside of teams over the last five games uh, against teams not that aren't the Bengals. Yeah, he was up, he was up in the top five earlier this season. He's dropped way off. 
four straight games of 100 yards, uh, four, four touchdowns in that span from weeks two to five, and then all of a sudden just off the cliff. All right. I'm going to drop the turkey gavel again. So who's your uh, who's your other turkey, uh, turkey uh, button? Yeah, I, I wrote them down earlier, and I haven't thought of a new one since. Uh, so I'm going to go Jalen Samuels. Um, everybody was expecting him to step it up with James Conner out. Um, especially in PPR, we knew he wasn't the greatest runner, but last year, um, he was great, um, catching passes out of the backfield. Uh, this year in his first game, he was great catching passes out of the backfield. And since then, just absolutely nothing. I don't know if it's because of Rudolph and Hodges. I don't know what it is, but yeah, Samuels, he's next to useless for fantasy purposes. Um, he hasn't done anything since, you know, it, it basically, he needs to catch a short yard as touchdown, or he's not scoring any points. And that's a turkey in my book. Mm. And uh, my turkey is uh, going to be uh, Jordan Howard. Um, he's he's injured right now. He was injured. He's been injured for two games. I don't know what he's going to be coming back into now because of Jay Ajayi's uh, production. And it looks like he could be sharing. He could end up be sharing carries with. Uh, uh, with Jay Ajayi when he returns. I think Miles Sanders is still okay because Miles Sanders is kind of multi-purpose, but I don't think, um, I think you have to be a little bit concerned that Jordan Howard is not going to have the, the early downs anymore to himself, which was, uh, I mean, he was quite, he was, he was quite a good flex play throughout the season until Jay, uh, Jay Ajayi came along. So, um, yeah, if he comes back, um, I'm a little worried starting him now because of, uh, the emergence of uh, Jay Ajayi in the offense and how much they plan to use him. I don't think uh, Jay Ajayi is just going to go away. I think uh, could be Doug Peterson. We'll have to see, but I don't think uh, Jordan Howard owns those uh, early downs anymore. It could could come down to that. Just have to... <clears throat> and so, uh, yes, and I also agree on uh, Jalen Samuels. Do it's, he's uh, well, we talked about him. But, uh, we'll find out what happens. Anyways, moving on up, moving on up. Uh, go ahead, Jono. Uh, who is moving on up for you? I'm going Tyler Boyd. Um, Andy Dalton's back. No more Ryan Finley. And uh, I think Tyler Boyd is going to be very happy to have his uh, his starting QB back. And he's going to jump back to um, higher levels of production. He already had 101 yards and a touchdown this week with, uh, with Finley in. I think next week uh he's got the jets and then the browns i think he's gonna be he's gonna have a good time with uh with the uh, with dalton back in there mm. <clears throat> i'm gonna uh, before we get to that i'm gonna have a bonus turkey can i do that i have a bonus turkey yeah, i'm gonna go have ahead. an extra i'm gonna have an extra piece of turkey i'm gonna say saquon barkley Ooh, i like it uh because he's had uh um, in his last two games, six fantasy points, seven fantasy points. You're not. That's not RB one. That's not RB one at all. I mean, his his last highest game was was at Detroit, and he got 24 fantasy points. But he's had three touchdowns all season. So uh, Saquon Barkley. Um, that's my bonus turkey. Um, on the other side, of course, uh, moving on up for me, of course, is uh, we already talked about him, and it's got to be it. It has to be uh, Jonathan Williams. If you picked up Jonathan Williams, if you spent all your fab. I don't know if you saved your fab for this kind of thing. He's had two straight games of 100, uh, 100 plus yardage. I mean, uh, you don't know with the broken hand, you think Marlon, kind of assume that Marlon Mack's not coming back. So I think, uh, Jonathan Williams, uh, uh, if he's still hanging around anywhere, I doubt he is. Uh, he's definitely moving on up in my book. Without question. Yep, totally, totally agree. And I will say this about about Jonathan Williams. This is one thing he's he's had some off field issues in the past. Uh, I can't remember exactly what they were. I'd have to look it up in the archives of of uh, 2017. But uh, he was out of the league for for I, I don't know for some off field problems or something. But uh, it wasn't very good. So I don't know. I keep an eye on him. But uh, for the time being, he's doing the job. Definitely moving on up in my book. Yep. Um. I don't even know if this is a moving on up. I think this is just more of a praising what he's done and hoping people kind of realize it is Jameis Winston. Um, he's QB one, two, three, four, five, six. He's QB seven on for the entire season. Uh, that's firmly QB one territory. Nobody really wants to start him because of all the picks he throws, but keep in mind, he's on pace to lead. Like he theoretically could lead the NFL in touchdown passes and interceptions. And I mean, he's still producing through all the picks. The, Buccaneers have to throw it. The running game is not good enough. Jameis is going to throw the ball 40, 45 times a game. He's going to put up the numbers. And, you know, he's only owned in 89% of leagues. If somebody out there 
if he's out there and available in some, in these 11% of leagues, somebody please add him. Um, <laughs> Tom Brady is 96% and he hasn't scored over 20 points since week six. Um, Matt Ryan looked like, like really bad against the Buccaneers defense. That was supposed to be a cake matchup. He looked bad. He's 97% owned. Um, James doesn't really get a lot of credit for what he's done for fantasy this year. And I think people should start to recognize uh, how useful he actually is. Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah, he is. He uh, he definitely does deserve the recognition. He did, like you say, he just a bit of a sputtery start, like you say, that uh, he has he has come into his own and he overcomes his uh, he overcomes. He never he doesn't get flustered over over interceptions. He just keeps on going. Uh, my other guy is well, I, I sort of had the debate of of which of which player to choose, but I'm going to go with it's kind of an obvious one, but. Uh, DJ Moore of the, uh, Carolina Panthers. He's got, um, he's had 100, 101, 120, 95, and 126 yards receiving in his last four games. I mean, I think he's reaching closer and closer to that upper echelon of, of wide receivers. I definitely, definitely the better own than a lot of players that, uh, that we see. I mean, he's, He's definitely got to be moving on up in, towards the uh, top 10. Right now, he's top 20. I think he's top 10 now. Um, he's definitely moving on up in my books, and he'll be moving up in the rest of the season. Um, I've had him I've had him far too long lagging behind uh, at number 20. I'm going to move him. I'll probably move him into the top 10. Would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, just over the last four weeks, his performance has definitely warranted that. Um, he's developed a ton of chemistry with Kyle Allen. And like I said, he's he's good. He's a, he's an electric after catch guy. Um, if he if you can get him the ball with a little bit of space, he can make great things happen. And obviously, he's shown that over the last four weeks. And so that is our Thanksgiving, uh, our Thanksgiving uh, uh, turkey show. So we had some turkey and uh, talked talked a little bit of turkey. Uh, anything else you want to add before? Is there any kind of news that uh, that we should be on the lookout for, or anything, any games or any other guys? You know, we haven't talked a little bit much about the. Uh, about tight ends this week, I will I will say that Eric Ebron is on an IR. So um, Mike Gusecki, out of the week, out of the week. No, but he is a tight end that's available in eighty five percent of leagues. That's gotten six uh, hit that no no fewer than six targets in the last four weeks. Um, he's like the number two option in that passing game. And honestly, tight end is so bad. Gusecki was tight end four this week, and he had twenty eight yards. There's some names so, up here I haven't even heard of. Other than Caden Smith, Logan Thomas. Jaden Graham. If you need a tight end, Mike Gusecki's there. You're not going to find consistent targets like that on the waiver wire this late in the season for a tight end, especially. I don't know. I'm still going to take stay with Hollister. Oh yeah, if you have Hollister, but if you need a tight end. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you need a tight end, huh? Greg Olson being solid again. Just looking at some of the names up here. Yeah, there's been some. But uh, Ryan Sticky Hands Griffin. That's the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Sticky Hands Griffin. Look at that. It's just. Uh, no real big names coming out. Uh, let's see. No. Oh, Kelsey. Kelsey was on bye. And oh, Kelsey was on a bye. I know that. But uh, well, I'm just looking at... Just, I'm just trying to look to see if there's any other oddball names that came up in the top 10 this week. But it, it looks like it's the only oddballs are in the tight end department, which has been just a total disaster this year. Yep. I don't know. What do you yeah. think of no, what do you think of no tight end leagues or combining uh, that's, that, it? That's pushing it. I mean, if you're playing no tight end leagues, then you're taking a lot of strategy out of it. You know, like the tight end position, you're drafting. You have to make that choice. You know, whether you want to take Kelsey, Kittle, Ertz in the first four rounds, three four rounds, or you wait. Right? It's a strategy thing. It's not. Com- they're not completely random. You have to pick that and strategize for it. it's not like kickers where you have the best kicker in the league get you nothing one week and you know 35 points the next week it's if you're taking tight ends out of it then you're just being lazy i i oh yeah you are you no, I, I i i just put that question to you as a as just throwing it out there but i just want to yes that is my official stance if you take, if you're playing in a fantasy league without tight ends um because they're too random you're just being lazy <laughs> Uh, so it's people just don't like randomness in, in fantasy football anymore. They don't like they don't like kickers. You know, it just seems like I mean, no, we don't want. I mean, even defenses can be random. Too. So, but um, yeah, I when it comes to next year's draft, I think a lot of people, myself probably included, I'm probably going to really I'm going to put tight ends on the back burner. I don't really need it. I don't really need them until the eighth or ninth round. 
I'm really not gonna I'm not gonna go out and reach for any anybody in particular. I mean not even not even Kittle. I'll let I, I, I would probably reach for K- Kelsey and Kittle, I think they're about as safe as you're gonna get, barring injury of course. But just having that sit, like that set and forget spot at tight end especially. Like for example, like in my w- one league right now, I have Kelsey and outside of my week I really don't think about it. But in our league, I've been starting Jack Doyle, John U. Smith, Delaney Walker, like Goddard, it's been a rough season at that position. I know it's been rough. I've got, I got, uh, I somehow, well, I stashed uh, Jacob Hollister, so I, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna roll with him mainly because he's matched up. I've, I've Russell Wilson, so I'll stick with that. Anyways, I guess we should wrap up our show. Uh, I hope everyone has a happy Thanksgiving, and uh, and I hope that your waiver wire will be successful. And I hope that if you need a win to get in the playoffs this week, I hope get it and i hope some of the stuff that we've talked about really help hopefully kevin ho will be back with us next week on the fantasy edge but uh jono i hope you have a i know we're uh we, we don't uh we don't celebrate thanksgiving we'll, we'll th- celebrate it in spirit of course because when football's on right of course and so everyone yes. have a happy thanksgiving and we'll see you next week on the fantasy edge take care everybody and have a good uh <clears throat> take care Bye-bye. That's the show. Cool.